This really caught me off guard. Microsoft is really diving in deep into AI. I mean, we already saw some really crazy expansions from them with the whole Bing chat thing, essentially revolutionizing how we use search in, in a lot of ways. Bing chat really was the first AI search engine. And I've heard that a lot of people are actually preferring Bing AI search with chat over Google. But now they want to take it to the next level. At the Microsoft Build event, they announced that they're integrating Bing Chat directly inside of Windows. And I think you guys can imagine how much of a game changer this could possibly be. I mean, imagine when you need help on Windows, trying to install something, trying to do something, trying to set up and use different features, you can literally just ask the Windows chat or the Bing chat on the side for help. And they showed us some pretty cool demos. There's just a lot to talk about with Microsoft's new announcement here. By the way, whenever you see one of these Twitter users, give them a follow because they're always providing us with great AI news. So Bing Chat directly being integrated into Windows, and again, if you guys don't remember, Bing Chat is powered by OpenAI's GPT technology. They're calling it Windows Copilot. It's gonna be integrated into all of your Windows apps that provide you with a centralized AI assistant. And Windows 11 is going to become the first operating system that's going to adopt a centralized AI assistant to help you get everything done, which is, like I said earlier, pretty revolutionary and pretty powerful. Apple seems to be lagging behind on the AI space so far. We haven't heard anything AI related really from Apple so far, other than the fact that AI apps have taken over the Apple App Store. Anyways, we've got a little bit of a clip that we can watch from Microsoft here that's, you know, a little advertising piece. Very cool visuals, Microsoft. Opens up into the Windows 11 home screen. Click it to open Windows Copilot here integrated into all of Windows. Essentially, you can ask it to adjust different things to achieve different goals here. It's gonna give you different recommendations and actually have settings directly integrated inside of Windows for you to click on and adjust in real time, which is pretty awesome. Clearly works with your documents here. You can drag all that stuff in. You can ask it to summarize different PDFs, which is a really cool feature. We have that with ChatGPT plugins right now. You can have it recommend specific Spotify playlists as well, and then you can have it open up Spotify and play that right on your computer. As you can see here, you can literally ask it to import plugins and use specific apps inside of your computer and work with the chatbot on them, which is pretty crazy. It really is like having an extra set of hands on your computer. I think ever since the dawn of computer technology, folks have wanted extra help. You can also ask it to send the logo to the design squad inside of Microsoft Teams, which is like their Discord enterprise software for connecting business teams together. And it can go ahead and literally send that all inside of the chatbot for you, which is pretty crazy. So again, it is like having a little assistant for your Microsoft Windows. And you know, they're they're trying to integrate this into everything from your schedules into web browsing, asking to summarize websites to actually helping you with video gaming, which honestly, I, I don't see how this could be useful, but all right, Microsoft, sure, games. Remember, they're trying to add this co-pilot also into Microsoft Word. They're trying to have it into Microsoft Excel. So it's really just a combination of all these apps and Microsoft technology working together with AI. They are really blasting off into the future with this stuff. It's cool, but the, the biggest problem here is that it's only offered on Windows 11. And personally, I don't really like Windows 11 all that much. I literally just tried it out a few days ago and I had nothing but issues. Yeah, that's the thing is you gotta upgrade to Windows 11 if you want to have these new features. So probably wanna test these out in the future for you guys. I'm gonna have to upgrade back to Windows 11 and deal with all the horrors that come with it. At any rate, viewers, there are going to be plugins Again, Microsoft and OpenAI are collabing together on this and bring you all the plugins that we already have with ChatGPT, Expedia, Kayak, Zillow, Wolfram Alpha is going to be in there as well, which is one of my favorite ChatGPT plugins at the moment. So it's really bringing all of these companies directly into your chatbot. Adobe is also going to be in there, as we mentioned earlier, and Adobe has been releasing some very powerful AI technology as of late. They also have some developer specific features as well, which is this dev home feature that makes it very easy to connect GitHub, which is like the holy grail of uploading your software and essentially set up the machine to code, easily installing all the tools and packages that you need to get your different stuff working. So I imagine this is going to make that 
whole process very simple. Even if you're not a developer and you're just trying to run experimental software on your machine from GitHub or all these different GitHub applications, they often require different packages, different Python and all this weird stuff like Node.js. Windows is going to help you be able to download all of that and get your machine set up to run these specific programs. So following tutorials that are a little bit more complex is going to become a lot easier in the future for people. I know a lot of people with Windows computers who struggle to figure out how to install a little bit more complicated things, a little bit more complicated tools. So it's really going to make things easier. Dev Home might actually be useful for people who aren't even developers. It makes it really easy to clone different repositories from GitHub. We have all the different applications and packages that need to be installed to make this specific repository work. You just click the setup button and then the chatbot actually does it all faster for you by going into the different files, figuring out where stuff needs to go, and just setting up the whole cloned repository on your machine to develop. Adding all of the different applications that you know might need to be added. Track your changes natively with Git and all of these different productivity apps for power users. Microsoft really has always focused their Windows platform as being more for productivity than anything else, and this really just brings it more into the forefront of that. You can also open Copilot up right away if your code isn't working, and it can help you figure out different things and also learn how to code. I think this is going to make it a lot easier for folks to learn how to code. Very, very cool stuff. Again, they're showing off the, the video gaming. I'm not sure what that's about, Microsoft. Oh, yeah, viewers, one smaller update here. ChatGPT is now using the Bing search inside of it because there were so many problems with the base model ChatGPT search and the Bing search just works a lot better. And Microsoft is also announcing Microsoft Fabric, which is an AI powered integrated analytics platform that unifies different experiences, lowers costs and accelerates intelligence deployment. It can help businesses of all sizes, they say, gain different insights from their data and make better decisions based off of that data. Absolutely crazy. I'll let this ad play for itself. Introducing Microsoft Fabric, a unified data analytics platform. One product, one experience, one architecture, one business model. Unified data is stored in one lake, a SaaS data lake for the entire organization. Data is integrated and stored in an open format, allowing one copy to be used to train machine learning models, visualize data, and run SQL queries on the lake and data warehouse. A unified experience brings together all the tools data professionals need. Pipelines for orchestrating data movement, experiments for training machine learning models, semantic models for defining key metrics, and much more. And for business users, Fabric brings together data for collaborating and doing ad hoc analysis in Microsoft 365. Unified governance, security, and compliance is built in for all your data. And with Copilot from Microsoft Fabric, AI helps everyone be more productive. Whether it's writing SQL statements, building reports, or setting up automations based on triggers. All your data, all your teams, all in one place. This is Microsoft Fabric. So just more absolutely ridiculous technology coming out of Microsoft. I mean, this this is another true game changer. It has that Microsoft Copilot that's integrated into your Windows PC, all of your different Microsoft apps. It's it's inside of Bing and now it's inside of your analytics data for your business too, making different decisions for you and, you know, setting up different triggers to essentially automate entire tasks. I mean, this is the technology that is going to revolutionize businesses. This is the technology that is also going to displace jobs, I'm sure, but you know, it's just going to elevate, uh, the human ability to produce by quite a lot. That's really what the AI technology is, is going to do. It's absolutely insane, though, all of the different things it can do. Absolutely nuts. It's, it's very mind-blowing stuff, and it's it's a little scary because it's it's everywhere. It's in your businesses. It's in your internet. It's, it's in your computer. I'm sure that is definitely making a lot of people feel a little bit wary, but again, you can't deny how productive and organized all of this is going to be when AI is just figuring it out for you. So this is also pretty crazy. They show Microsoft's co-pilot editing a legal document and making legal decisions or legal suggestions. I'll let this one speak for itself. 
I got a legal contract here, and I need some help with California law. So I'm going to call three plugins from Thomson Reuters. Help me understand how to edit the limitation of liability using the practical law plugin. It'll read the document, find the paragraph, and make that change. Next, I want to know if this is enforceable under California law. So I'll call the Westlaw plugin that will do that analysis, and it'll come back and give me an analysis about it from a legal perspective. And finally, since we're making lots of changes, I'd like to know the, the summary of all of these changes. And with document intelligence, I get a simple table that shows you all of those changes in an easy to read format. I mean, how ridiculous is that? The AI is just doing the work for you. When does it end? When does it stop? No one knows. AI craziness everywhere. That is that is truly our future. It's it is very overwhelming. I think that we can all agree on that. We will just have to see once these AI programs get integrated into our windows and our different applications. We'll have to see how it is to get used to them and get used to working with them. It might be a, a easy process. It might be a difficult process. Can't deny this is pretty insane, though. It knows the law in the specific state of California. It makes the changes and then gives you a summary of it. Crazy stuff. These AIs are now providing us with legal advice. On Microsoft's blog, they have a few key points. Greater availability of Azure Open AI services, which is essentially what powers ChatGPT, for example. So more people are going to finally be able to get access to the GPT-4 model. Copilots across a wide range of users. Dynamics 365 Copilot, Microsoft 365 Copilot, and Copilot for Power Platform. And again, like we just talked about, the expansion of the new AI-powered Bing to Windows 11. Mobile and Skype, which is still around apparently. Who uses Skype anymore? Bing Image Creator is also inside of Bing Chat with no waitlist on this Bing stuff. This is just the beginning of the new era of AI. They also have a new Azure AI tooling that helps developers build and operationalize their own next-gen AI apps. They literally built an Azure AI studio just so businesses can learn how to input machine learning. And again, Google is also working on stuff very similar to this. So it's just these big tech companies racing to implement this technology as fast as possible and spread it out as fast as they can. They want people using their AI services. It's also important to note here, NVIDIA is a company that they are collaborating with on this because NVIDIA powers all of this AI processing at the moment. Their chips and their cards are right now at least the best at doing all of this AI processing. So viewers, wild times we are living in. It is hard to keep up with this. And if you're worried about paying attention to all of this, don't worry. No single person is able to pay attention to all of this, including myself. So we just got to take it one step at a time, one glimpse into the world of our AI future at a single time. Thank you so much for watching, viewers. I greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Check out my video tomorrow for a general AI news recap of the past week. See you in the next one. Goodbye.